Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. Good evening and welcome to the Metro Manila Arena. We're here in the Philippines for tonight's main event. 12 rounds in the Bantamweight division. And now the time has come. All the talk, now comes the walk. We went over the rules in the dressing room. Let's have a good, clean fight. Touch them up. They're scheduled for 12. Here's round number one. Back to the body. Good defense just covering up down low. On the mark with a straight left hand. Unload! Way through this round here. And he engages in the clinch. Just missed scoring with that punch. Last 10 seconds of this first round. You gotta land a big punch now. No doubt about it, you are losing this fight. You need to throw and land a big shot. You need to cover up, okay? You're leaving yourself open too much. Cover up! You gotta give me the double jab. You're not giving me the double jab. You're only giving me one jab at a time, okay? Here we go. Round two is underway. Well, he's committed to the left hand and it's paying off here. A shot upstairs. What a big shot. Unable to survive that shot. He's on the floor. lot of credit for even getting up from that knockdown but he still has to impress and move forward here yeah I applaud him I give him credit but I also recognize that he's in good shape that's one of the reasons he got off oh you got this 
next one. Let's go, hit him. That wasn't able to land. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. He is not in good Take shape. He Take could be on the deck in moments. Hey, keep fighting. Just let's go. So he scores a knockdown in the last on, round. Go. Now he gets Keep to settle up. down Keep and gather himself a bit. Do you go after it? Do you get super aggressive here having had your man hurt? Or do you still have to employ a certain amount of caution? It's kind of like being at the carnival. You know, you just you just hit the bullseye and you got that big, big stuffed animal you can give to your wife or your girlfriend. But now he doesn't want you to go away with that. Oh, no. no, no. He tells you, wait a minute, try again. You could trade that in for something either bigger. But you might lose the one you have already. That's the question. So this round is underway, and what a difference a break makes for him. Look at how fresh he is to start this round after getting hit Keep hard moving. and rocked Keep in that moving. last round. What a difference a rest makes when the corner knows how to take advantage of that rest. They got water on him, they revived him, they massaged his legs a little bit, gave him some encouragement, good to go. Able to dismiss it. Focus. Really wanted that uppercut, but just couldn't get it. And now just wasting away some time with that clinch. Unload! Unload! More punches! Threw the straight right hand, but didn't score with it. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Relax! Relax! <laughs> and just grabbing on to his opponent. Shot. Focus. Nice block. Uppercut. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. Body shot. Ten clicks of the talk. And we come to the end of the round. You have to. You have to be busy. This, this guy is beating the shit out of you. You have to throw three or four punches in a row. You can turn this around, but you gotta let it go. You need to throw more. Listen, you need to move your head more, side to side, okay? I want to see that head move more. There you go. Looking good, looking good. Keep your hands up, all right? You're doing fine. This is a fairly competitive, tight fight. The difference being, of course, we did have a knockdown scored, as you look at Teddy's scorecard. And that's what professional boxing is about, putting fannies in the seats. The harder puncher, the guy who's more effective, the guy who puts more hurt on you, gets the round. That punch just close. Pace yourself! Frustrating his opponent with great defense. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. 90 seconds to go in round number four. Good, solid right hand he lands there. 
That shot unable to land. Solid. How about that? He goes from being the victim to handing out the punishment. to prepare for a situation like this, but many do. He's been down, now he's got to survive. So that's where you're wrong. It's not hard to prepare, it's a must to prepare. If you're a trainer, that's, that's what right. you do in the gym. Right. You teach a guy, if you're in this situation, this is what you do. You grab on, you move your head, you survive. Face yourself. And he just holds on there. Walks away that headshot. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. So he scores a knockdown in the last round. Now he gets to settle down and gather himself a bit. Do you go after it? Do you get super aggressive here having had your man hurt? Or do you still have to employ a certain amount of caution? It's kind of like being at the carnival. You know, you just you just hit the bullseye and you got that right. big, big right. stuffed animal you can give to your wife or your girlfriend. But now he doesn't want you to go away with that. Oh, no. No, no. He tells you, wait a minute, try again. You could trade that in for something either bigger. But you might lose the one you have already. That's the question. How quickly can he recover? That's one of the questions that will be answered early on in this round after being knocked down in that last round. Well, what he has to do is go out there, be defensive-minded. I think get a little time early on. Don't worry about winning or pressing the first part of the round. Just get himself together, then start picking it up after that. Well, his opponent is opening up and coming forward, so I would think there are some opportunities that exist. Yeah, I think some counter-punching opportunities. Opportunities not on the front end, but on the back end. Keep moving, keep moving. Supposed to be fighting, but instead he's hugging. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. Plus shot, the left hand came in. Now hugging on the inside. Got this one. Prove that accuracy, missed with the headshot. Oh, he is stuck. He could go down. Deep breath now. Deep breath. Relax. Relax. Are you all right? I need you to keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Don't worry now, all right? I just I need you to. Good, good, nice work. Listen, I want you to go downstairs, then upstairs, okay? Body, then head. Let's finish this. All right, you look great. Just don't get... He seems fully recovered to me. Here we are, the start of a new round, and a fighter that got tagged hard in the last round okay. seems as fresh as could be. Well, when you push a fighter, when you push a human being to a dark place, that's when you're going to find out what's right inside of them, what's great inside of them. And he's responding just that way. Finish with a hook. Unload. Unload. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. 
Here's something that's a key factor now, and that is his ability to simply defend himself. He's doing a wonderful job at it. Yeah, he is, and that gives him the ability to always be fresh and confident round after round since he's not taking a lot of punishment. He fires off the combination there, and it lands. Halfway through round six. That was off the mark. Uppercut. And now he's acting like a fighter. Coming back with the right hand after getting scored upon. Let it go. Not able to connect with the Throw uppercut. The body, kid. Body shots. Ten seconds to go in this round. End of the round of what has been a very close and highly competitive fight. Teddy, how do you see this right now? I see it almost dead even. And I see whoever finishes the rounds, because in these kind of tight rounds, if you finish up good, the judges remember that. You're letting this guy get away. Come on. This is it. You've got to make it a fight now. You can't just move around. you got to move. So as the bell sounds, we put to bed the first half of this fight, and we are underway with a new round. Right on the mark with the hook up top. I got to wonder to myself right now, is he going to become overconfident landing the hooks this easily because he's still against a very live guy? Well, what he's got to be careful, you know, that's a good question, Joe. He can stay confident with it because it's working for him, but what he's got to do is make sure when he's on the inside that he keeps his head over on the side where he keeps it outside his opponent's right hand. If he stays outside where he's safe, he can throw as many as he wants, and he won't have to worry about getting overconfident. Not much go. action as he just ties up. Well, he's throwing it, but just missed. Isn't landing it. <laughs> Halfway through the seventh round. Not able to land the headshot. And he returns on that exchange. And he's holding. He scores with the jab there. Carries that punch away. Ten seconds to go in the seven. And round seven comes to an end. Let's breathe. Relax. How are you feeling out there? You know, you're not winning this fight, right? You're not winning. You He's beating. I need you to throw more than one punch out there. I don't think there's any doubt about it that his performance is not what he hoped for it to be tonight. However, there is still hope. Remember, earlier tonight, he had his man down. They traded knockdowns earlier in this fight, so you can take that scoreboard and just look the other way. Yeah, exactly, and the good news, as you just touched on, is 
the corner can tell him, hey, you scored a knockdown. This is what you have to do. But the bad news is his opponent can say, and his opponent's corner can tell him, hey, don't make that one mistake you made early in the fight. That is his only hope. Don't give it to him. Now his opponent got away from that uppercut. Keeping his hands up, getting away of his opponent's effort. Really frustrating his opponent now, as he's so defensively sound, it doesn't make for an easy target. No, it doesn't, and it makes for a very frustrating night for his opponent. I see his opponent now, if you notice, he's getting a little tentative. He's afraid to let the punches go because when he misses, he's worried he's gonna leave an opening. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Focus. He gives as well as he takes. You saw it on that exchange. Clock counting down here in round number eight. Ten seconds to go. Teddy, what advice would you be giving to this charge if you were training him, knowing he's coming off of a good, solid effort in that last round and likely is up in a close fight? Well, you know, sometimes I'm not sure what to tell a guy, but I know what not to tell him. I wouldn't tell him he's up. I wouldn't tell him to let up. That's Let's one go. thing for sure. I tell him, keep doing the same things what you're doing. Fight? Stay right with him. Let's get moving out there. This guy's going to win this fight. If you don't take control, son, you need to take control. Yeah. Good action here tonight. Both guys bringing their best, and both guys meeting each other stride for stride, punch for punch. Tough fight to score here as we're back underway. So here he is again, missing more punches. Now, I like a guy that throws punches, Teddy, but at some point, you got to do more than that. Yeah, I tell you right now, if he was a carpenter, I would not have him coming in doing my kitchen cabinets because he'd be just cutting up a lot of wood, you know, and it'd be all over the place. But I wouldn't have the bookshelves. I wouldn't Everybody, have the cabinets kid. that I Body want. Shots. I would, I'd have a mess. And right now, this fight's getting messy. was just off the mark. 90 seconds into the ninth round. Punch! Punch! Unable to land that shot. See him holding on. Left Here's a right, moment here as you see right. the step back counter punch where you realize this is the sweet science, not just some raw savagery swinging out there. Look at the little subtleties here, Joe. What he does is he forces Ace him yourself. into a position to stop the punch. And then when he stops, steps back, makes a miss, and comes right back. I like the way he looked at the end of that round. It looks like he's gaining some momentum here. Good competitive fight, and I do believe that he's up on the scorecards. Yeah, I have it the same way. Keep circling. Don't stand in front of him. He's almost done. You had him that round. You're in control. Next round, let's keep busy. You don't need that. No, throw that away.
Back to live action now in what has been a closely contested fight. One of those fights that somebody is still waiting to break through and be a difference maker in. Teddy, when you've been in the corner in your career and you have a charge who is not making a lot of contact, what do you tell me? Wow, what a turnaround. You never know what's going to happen in this game. You're never supposed to take anything for granted, never assume anything. They tell you that in life. In the ring, you get taught that real fast. He got caught by a big shot. And we've reached the halfway point of round 10. That's a well-placed counter shot. It was the overhand right after he blocked his opponent's effort. Oh, you see him with the left of the head there? Off the mark. We count down the final moments of this round. And the bell rings, signifying the end of the round. You can throw him off with some head movement. That's it. Throw him off with head movements. Here you go. Jab, jab, and throw. Throw to the body, then to the head, then finish to the body. Hard to believe we're in this position as we look at Teddy's scorecard to start round number 11. It was only a few rounds ago. It was a much bigger gap on your scorecard. Yeah, well, he understood. He came to terms with himself. He knew what he had to do. Now it's up to his opponent. Does he come to terms One, with two. himself? Does he start One, doing two. what he was doing early in the fight? seconds to go in this 11th round. Unload! Able to show you his blocking ability. there he may hit the floor and he ties up on the inside he scores with the jab jump on him nice 10 seconds remaining in this round he is not in good shape he could be on the deck in moments and there's the bell. He is saved by the bell. Oh, boy, Teddy, he's in a world of hurt now. Only 60 seconds in front of him. And you know what? Less than 60 seconds. It took him five seconds to get him on that stool. So right now, 
they can't concentrate just on telling them things, and he needs to be told why he got hit. But they got to get ice on him, and they got to, right now, they have to revive him. We want to win this one. You got to win. You got to win. You need to move your head more, okay? Side to side. Lean to the side. Boom. Count. This has been a real good one tonight. And now it comes down to this, the final round. Nice. Work the body. It's fine. Nice work, nice work. Keep working the jam. Good, good. Back to the body. Not an accurate hook at all. Distance such a key factor always, Teddy, when it comes to defense. With his good foot movement, he's been keeping that distance. His opponent, how does he close that gap properly? Well, first of all, he's got to use his jab to close it because he's getting picked off coming in. He's getting pot shotted. So he's got to have something coming at his opponent that keeps him distracted. Use that jab. Now, don't use it conventionally, Joe. You're jabbing at the head, you're not finding nothing. You're just finding space. So jab a little lower. Drop the sights a little bit. Jab at his shot. chest. Just so you touch something, and then you can work your way in. You can start to find them a little. That's what I want to see. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. And once again, he returns fire up top. Ten seconds to go in this, the final round. Competitive throughout. Who got it? To find out, we send it up to the ring. Seemed like he was destined to win throughout the fight. Teddy, your scorecard showed that, and the judges agree. Unanimous decision. Yeah, he was destined to win because he kept using that jab all night long and outworking his opponent. That does it from ringside. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us.